It's Chicken Pot Pot. Okay, Mr. Minus is here, and mmm, do I love pie. Yep, pie is not, not only is pie one of my favorite numbers, but it's one of my favorite desserts too. And I love, I love to uh, look at, you know, big, huge apple pies. Um, I like myself some chicken pot pie. Um, oh, I just, I just love pie, especially this time of season when we're talking about Thanksgiving and we have, um, and we have pumpkin pie and lemon meringue pie and pecan pie and all those types of pies that you get when you're with your family. So what I'm going to take a look at today is I'm going to think about um, in the aspect of pie, maybe we can explain some of these terms um, that we use for when we're doing sample surveys. So let's take a look at some of these terms and uh, I'm going to go have maybe some of this pie. We'll be right back. All right. Mm, now that we take a look at some of that pie, let's talk about sample surveys and how the idea of pie is going to help me with uh, explaining to you about what do we do when we deal with sample surveys. So we have three ideas that we want to keep in mind when I take a really good sample survey. We want to make sure that uh, we have data that is going to be usable. So how do we do that? Well, when we're doing a survey, we want to keep in mind three things. The first thing is we want to randomly select our participants. Now, why would we randomly select? Well, what randomization does is it allows us to reduce the amount of bias that we have in our sample survey. Now, how do we get bias? Well, bias is any time that we have a survey that either underestimates or overestimates the actual population and what's happening in that population, then we have a problem with our survey. So, randomly selecting is going to give us an, uh, give us a good exam a good sample of what we're going to do so now let's let's talk about why we want to sample the population um, let me first talk about how pi could deal with by let's suppose I wanted to taste my apple pie and I have a, I have a, an apple pie here and, and this apple pie mm, I bet you it tastes so good I'm going to take a taste of that apple pie and I'm going to take some of that crust. I'm going to eat some of that crust. Yeah, this apple pie tastes good. Let me give it to everyone else. Well, the problem is, is I only tasted the crust. Um, so that also has to do with a sample and I'll get to that in a second. But um, maybe I like the crust. You know, I don't really like the inside. So I'm just going to taste the crust. Well, I'm already biased towards the crust. I think the crust is good. So that's going to, that's going to overestimate how other people enjoy my pie if I bake this pie myself. So that's, we want to reduce bias by randomly selecting where on the pie that I'm going to taste. Okay, so that, that way I, I can kind of eliminate that bias. So what about sampling the population? Now, we want to take a good sample. We want to make sure that, that this pie, I'm going to use a chicken pot pie because I love chicken pot pie. I'm kind of hungry right now. And I think I would love to go and get a really big, nice chicken pot pie from Marie Callender's. Um, this is no, no uh, advertisement for Marie Callender's, but I tell you, they have some good chicken pot pie. So anyway, I'm going to get this chicken pot pie, and uh, and and you know, this chicken pot pie has a lot of things. It has to, it has a, a gravy, and it has peas and corn and and chicken and all kinds of really cool stuff. And and I, I want to get a taste of that chicken pot pie. Um, so do I have to eat? the entire pie to get a taste of the chicken pot pie to really get an idea of what this pie is going to taste like not really right i don't need to taste i don't need to eat the whole pie even though i'm kind of hungry and i would eat the whole pie if i just want to taste and get a good a good idea of what that pie tastes like all i really need to do is take maybe a spoonful and then take a bite mm, that tastes good i really got i have an idea of what that tastes like boom I can get the whole thing or eat the whole thing. Same thing when you go to Cold Stone and you get a taste of that ice cream. You don't need to in, eat the entire bucket of ice cream to know that that ice cream tastes good. You only need a sample. So that's why we just sample the population. That sample will give us a good idea of what the entire population is thinking about. The thing is, we want to take a random sample. So that way that random sample gives us an unbiased idea of what is happening in the entire population. So you might ask yourself, well, Mr. Maestas, um, how big does the sample have to be? 
What if I do the entire population, which is called a census, by the way. A census takes every single participant in that population and then figures out your data on that. What if I want to do that? That's going to give me more information, better information, more accurate information than just a sample is going to give me. Well, like I said, do I need to eat the entire pie to know what that pie tastes like? Probably not. A sample is good enough. What if I wanted to take a sample uh, and tell something about all Marie Callender's pies? I am not going to sit there and eat every single one of Marie Callender's pies. Uh, I don't have the girth and the time for that, okay? I'm not a professional food eater. So um, just a taste is good enough for the whole thing. That gets me to my third thing. The sample size is important, but not the fraction of the population. Which, again, uh, let's say I have a Costco pie. Now, if you've ever been to Costco, you know these pies are like, you know, these things are, are, are huge pies, right? I got a pumpkin pie that's that big. Well, a spoonful of that pie is going to tell me as much information as I need as a spoonful of a smaller pie. I don't, just because the pie is this big does not mean I have to take a spoon that's this big and shovel my spoon in there and eat that big of a pie. It's the fraction, the percentage of, of that sample doesn't have to be any bigger. In fact, later on, when we talk about inference and things, we're going to find out that really all we need is about 10% and that tells us enough. All right. In fact, we don't want more than 10%. We don't need a giant spoon to tell us that this pie is really good. Okay. We just need you know, the same size, a good enough representation. Um, and we, again, we don't want to take a census. So what I'm going to do right now is I think I'm going to go and um, sample some pies. See how they taste, all right? So, <laughs> wrapping up, guys, there's three ideas to taking a good sample survey. You have to have random selection. That reduces our bias. You have to sample the population with a good sample, a one that's representative of the population. And three, the sample size is important, but not the fraction of the population. So, uh, a small sample, if it's a good, if it's a good sample, is going to be, I mean, if it's a good representation, it's going to be good enough for the entire population, okay? So if we take, if we take a good enough representative sample, we can say and make conclusions about the entire population, regardless of how big that population is, okay? One, two, three, three ideas. I'm going to go have some pie now. See you later.